Welcome back. This is lesson two of machine learning Zoom Camp session eight. And in this lesson, we will talk about TensorFlow and Keras. As I mentioned previously, TensorFlow is a library for doing deep learning. Um, Google TensorFlow. We see that this is an end to end open source machine learning platform for everyone. It's, uh, it's actually more like a framework for doing deep learning. It can do other things, but the main focus for this uh, library is actually deep learning. So TensorFlow is a library for training deep learning models, and Keras is a higher level abstraction on top of TensorFlow. So we have TensorFlow, then inside TensorFlow we have Keras, which is a library which provides higher level abstraction, which makes it simpler to create, train, and use neural networks. So this is what we'll use today. And to install TensorFlow, TensorFlow doesn't come with Anaconda. So if you use Anaconda, you don't have TensorFlow. So what do you need to do? So in, let's say in case of uh, Anaconda, you can just do conda install TensorFlow. And then if you're doing it from Jupyter Notebook, you just need to add Y at the end means yes. Uh, like it will not ask you for confirming to install. Or alternatively, you can just use pip install TensorFlow. I already have it installed. So if you're doing it from your laptop, you can just install it this way. Actually, later in uh, videos after that, I will use Amazon SageMaker notebooks that already have TensorFlow and everything else configured. So I don't need to install anything. I can just take a notebook there and use it. For your local setup, if you don't have any GPU, if you don't have a GPU on your computer, this is what you do. If you have a GPU, it's a little bit more complex. Uh, maybe I will try to find some links and share with you, but I'm not really an expert in that. Uh, I usually usually prefer to use um, cloud solutions where, where everything is already configured. So I don't need to configure any, anything. I just create a notebook and start training a model. Yeah, this is how you install it. So I already have it installed. I installed it before. In this video, I still use my laptop. You can actually see that it's my local host, right? Yeah, so let's... We have installed TensorFlow and to use it, we use import TensorFlow. STF. Again, we have this shortcut. And then as I said, we will use Keras as well. Keras lives inside TensorFlow. So TensorFlow import Keras. So this is how we import these libraries. So I didn't execute that one as well. So we loaded the libraries. We installed the libraries. We loaded the libraries. Now what we want to do is we want to load the images. So remember, remember we have this closing data set. We have a train validation test there. So what we need to do now is load one of these images here. And we just want to see how to load images with Keras. That there is a special function that lives inside Keras. It's called load image. It's from TensorFlow, Keras, preprocessing, which import load image. And actually, Keras used to be a separate library from TensorFlow. At some point, it got absorbed into TensorFlow. So maybe if you find some tutorials online, you will see something else. So you will not see this uh, TensorFlow. It will look like that. So from Keras, preprocessing image, import load image. So uh, if you've come across a tutorial like that on the internet, what you need to do is you can just take this code and add TensorFlow in front of that. And that code should work without changes, hopefully. So, but we use uh, new TensorFlow. So this actually is true for TensorFlows uh, from version 2.0 and above, maybe even earlier. I don't remember, but for TensorFlow 2.0 for sure, Keras is already a part of TensorFlow. So yeah, you should use uh, TensorFlow that is at least 2.0 version. This is the function we use, and let's use it to load an image. Ooh, load an image from our closing data set. Train, let's take a t-shirt. The t-shirt I want to load is this one. So let me just clean it a little bit. So this will be path name. So this is the name of the file, and then full name path name. So use the f string here, which will automatically format it. So now full name looks like that. And let's use our load image function for loading it. So this is the image. This is actually a my t-shirt. I think I even recorded a couple of videos wearing this t-shirt. Actually, 
when we load an image, we can specify the size. So we can say that we want to resize this using target size. And the reason we need to do this is because a neural network expects an image of certain size. So usually you need to either to have an image of size, uh, let's say 299 by 299. Sometimes it's uh, 224 by 224 or smaller ones like 150 by 150. And if we have an image that is remote, and if we have an image that is quite large, let's say this is the t-shirt, then we need to resize this t-shirt to one of these formats. So let's see this one. And we do that, you can just specify the target size, say 299 by 299. And yeah, this is how it looks like. Or let's say if we want 150 by 150, then we get a small image. We can save this image into a variable. So now we have this image. This is actually, so the library for processing images is called PIL. I think it stands for Python image library, something like that. This is what many libraries use for processing images. So this image is actually, so let me take this one. The, the way image is uh, represented internally, it's just a NumPy array. Well, not necessarily a NumPy array, but an array with three channels. We have a red channel, a green channel, and we have a blue channel. And then for each of these channels, we have um, an array. And this array contains numbers between 0 and uh, 255, which is one byte. Right? So, so each cell here is a number. So here, this let's say this is green, the green channel. So we have numbers, so maybe here, 0, 100, 250, and so on, 100. One. So it can be any number between 0 and 255. Then we actually have three such channels. We also have red and we also have blue. And then uh, say if we take this, this pixel over here, a cell somewhere here that corresponds to it. Actually, this value here would be a combination of three things. It will be first the value from the red channel, then the value from the green channel, then the value from the blue channel. So, and since this one is almost black, so it has uh, probably almost zero in all these three channels. This is how images are encoded internally. In, in our case, it will be an array of size, uh, let's say if we have 150, 150 and three channels. So the shape of this array will be 150 by 150 by three. So this is this height, this is width, and this is a number of channels. And we can easily translate this uh, pillow image into an umpire array using just wrapping the image just putting the image in this numpy array. And what we have here, what we see, each of these rows here is R G is a pixel with RGB values. So the first one is R red, the second one is green, and then the third one is blue. We have 150 by, by 150 of them. So quite a few. And each of these rows is a pixel, just one pixel. Let me call these things x, so small x, um, because it's just one image, even though it's a multi-dimensional thing. It's actually, yeah, it's 150 by 150 by three. So this is how we turn an image that we load with Keras into an umpire array. Do you see the D type of this numpy array is uint8. U means unsigned, so it doesn't have a sign. So it goes from zero to 255, it's not from minus 127 to 128, but from zero to 255. And then int eight means that it's an integer that takes eight bits or one byte. So this is our image. And this is how we turn an image into a numpy array. And in the next video, we'll see how we can use a pre-trained convolutional neural network to understand what is on this image. So see you soon.